Hello, this is Skyler, and this is my third episode on programming the LEGO Mindstorms NXT using Robot C. And yeah, so very quickly, music's by Discord. Go to SoundCloud if you liked it, and you can download his songs and listen to them. And yeah, so today we are doing motors and um, a line follower. So let's get to work. Start a new file. First thing, task main, as always. And I'll go ahead and save this. Save as day three. And function library. Hopefully we'll oh, gotta compile it first. Bam, there we go. Function library. It's all there. And here's the line for making motors go. We're gonna make both motors go at once so that the robot, since our robot skid steer, and I'll show it to you in a minute, robot has one motor for each side, um, and so we'll power both. So here it is motor and that is always like that and then you've got which motor I'm using B and C and then you give it a value so you get motor motor C equals 100 so this makes motor B go for full speed the value can be between negative 100 and 100 and then zero is stop and uh, you can't do you can't do that you can only do whole numbers, but um, yeah. And then this, these don't really set the, the duration of how long you want the motor to go. And so you, if you want the motor to go for a second, then you have, wait one M sec, 1000. And after that, you could set the motor to something else. I'm not going to because uh, at the end of the program, the motors get stopped anyway. And so I don't need to worry about setting them. Um, and so yeah, I'll download the program and pull up the camera and so here we go simple skid steer drive basically one motor turns two wheels other motor turns the other two wheels and when both motors are going forward then the robot's going to go forward so I'll unplug that so that um, you can actually see this thing go somewhere and so find the file and there we go voila that is um that's motors and uh, let's see if we can make it backwards I'll have uh, negative 100 on there negative 100 on there and um, connect the robot hit F5 to download and yeah I know and um, going backwards there we go and um, very quickly we'll just do since this is a skid steer drive we can turn in place by having um, one of these positive and one of these negative one of one one side will be going forward the other side will be going backwards and so we get that oh sorry about that I'll um, there we go. So that is basic motor movement. Now let's go on to following a line. The logic for uh, you are annoying. Logic for following a line with one light sensor is fairly simple. Um, first thing you have to do is figure out which side of the line you want to follow. Because with a with a one light sensor line follower, you're not really following the line. You're following the contrast. And so we can either follow this contrast or this contrast. So I guess I'll just do um, I'll do this one, and basically we turn the left side on while the light sensor is reading a high value until it reads a low value, and then when it reads a low value, we have the right side power, and so it will basically just go like that. That's that's what it'll look like. And yeah, that's the line follower. So let's get to work. Um, first thing we want to do is look for a threshold. We need to see, we need to figure out what the value, the light sensor value for the table is and what it is for the tape. And so the tape is going to be a low number, the table is going to be a high number, and so a number in the middle is what's going to be the threshold. When the, when the light sensor value is above that number, when it's bigger than that number, then we know we're on the table. When the light sensor value is below that number, we know we're on the tape. 
and when we know that, then we know which motor to power. So, on here, I'm gonna go to the main menu, and then on the right, or on the left eventually, you have the view, and you can actually view the sensor feedback from your robot. So, reflected light, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bounce light off of the surface, and the light that bounces back, that's going to, the, the, that amount is going to vary based on the color. And so, it's reflected light, and we're on port one, and you can see, um, that's the light, emitting the light. So on the black, the value is roughly, roughly about 40, and on the white, it's about 54. So a threshold, a suitable threshold, might be somewhere like 47, and that number is between the um, between the value for the table and the value for the tape, and so that will be our threshold. So, programming this thing, I'm gonna close out of there, and we'll get rid of that stuff. So we'll do int threshold equals, um, what, 47 was it? Oh yeah, 47. Alright, so, um, very quickly, on the window, I have my menu level set to super user, and you can set them to basic, and that basically shows, you know, other stuff if you're a super user. But so if you see, in the next few minutes, if you see stuff that um, is not there on yours, that's because I'm a super user. And um, yeah, if you want to keep it basic, that's fine. This stuff should still be there. Motors and sensor setup. This configuration, um, it helps, it like automatically writes code when we hit apply. And um, so you don't have to remember this weird line of code. So sensor port one, that's the port we have our license plugged into. Um, we need to say, hey, this is a specific type of sensor because there are different ways the sensors communicate. So I'm going to say light active because that's that's what it is. It's an active light sensor. And I'll hit apply and it'll pop out this line of code that says, hey, sensor port one um, is a light sensor. And so um, let's get on with the code. Last week we talked about while loops um, and basically it was while um, something equals equals something else and that's a loop that's a while loop and when something when the value of something equals the value of something else then it does what's in here but when the instant that this that that's no longer the case the next time it checks it and it says hmm that's not true something does not equal something else then it's going to just skip over that like it's completely done with it and it just goes on to the next thing one for like a in inf for an infinite loop, you would say, well, true equals equals true, and so because true is always going to be true, then it does the code that we put inside here. Um, now I don't have to write all that out because programmer shorthand basically like that right there. When I say while true, that the programming language robot C knows that I imply equals equals true, and so while true, that will do what we're going to do here forever or until we get out of the program. Inside here, we need to check um, to see if the light sensor value is bigger or less than um, threshold. So the how we do that is sensor value, and then we say S1 because that's the port, is greater than threshold. What this does is it sensor value that actually that gets the, a number from you program for, from the from the NXT and it gets the value of sensor port 1 and it, we can compare it with threshold so if sensor value S1 is 48 48 is greater than 47 and so it'll do the stuff in here because this comes back saying yes true we got this and so in here um, we're gonna say motor and we, we're gonna need two of these we're gonna need to set motor B and motor A, or motor B and C. And back on here, um, I'm just gonna pick this side, like this side, just the opposite of this side. And you can fix that just by swapping your motor um, ports or 
uh, the values. So I'll just pick this side. When the when we're on the white, we want the motor C to get power and motor B to stay still. So C is going to get power. So we'll say equals 50. We'll say equals zero. Now, if sensor value S1 is not greater than threshold, then we want it to, we, we know where it's on the black now. So this is um, table, tape, and the tape is black. So on here, I'm gonna paste in my motor stuff and I'm going to replace these values. And so it's going to toggle, depending on whether it's the table or the tape, it's going to power one motor or the other. So it's gonna like wiggle around. And then the last thing, wait one M sec. If you've got a while loop, it's always a good idea to have a, um, that, that's just going forever. It's always a good idea to have a, um, a delay in there. So that gives your microprocessor a break. And this really is, uh, comes in handy. It's really necessary when you get into, um, like multi-threading other stuff where you've got, um, uh, multiple programs that all have to run. Um, if you've got one thread that's eating up all the processing power, then there's not, there's not a whole lot left for the other with threads. So just like for this, I could take it out, but it's good programming practice to leave it in or to put it in. So let's download this. I got USB and please don't crash my computer NXT. Okay. And we'll download it. So here it is. Ah, I know when I unplug this, it's going to pop up that annoying box. Here we go. So, go to my files and get the, whoa, whoop, need to start it. Here we go. And so that, folks, is a line follower. Um, yeah, I, I hope this, um, I hope this makes sense. And we can follow the other way. And yeah, this is it. That's, that is the line follower. Um, very quickly, um, I'm just going to cover one more thing. If you want to see the, um, the light sensor value yourself, like you want to incorporate in your program, um, and display it to the screen, like you don't want to use the view command, we can do that too. Um, I'll start a new program, and we'll say, um, task main, and we'll have a while loop because we want to do this all the time and what we can do is we can say um, int value equals oh value is blue when you have when you have something that's blue like when you when you want this to be a name because that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a, a name but it's blue that means I can't use it because it's intrinsic to robot C um, so I will name it um, number equals sensor value S1, Whoop. back to configuration, configure this as, configure port, sensor port 1 as an active light sensor, hit OK, adds that line. If I wanted to display number to the screen, then I could do something like NXT display uh, string. And here, first thing we want is line number. Next thing we want is the, the actual text. Modulus, or percent D, if you recall, basically says, hey, display the next thing I'm going to give you, or in this case, number, display number as a whole number right where this is. And we could say like, um, value equals, and it would, so it would display value equals, and then it would display the number. And we'll add, wait, one M sec. And we'll download this and we'll watch it work. F5. Oh, I need to save this code. Um, stuff. And downloading. And now, on here. Uh, get out of my face, pop up box. On here, you got stuff, run. And so the value, it changes. And that is directly related off of 
this like um, you can see the numbers are changing so quick little thing about that that's how it works so yeah hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comments and I'll answer you and yeah have a good weekend